Alright guys, let's look at another cool feature of SAS, and that is partials. Now what exactly are partials? Partials are also SCSS files of their own, but they don't get converted to CSS files. So the preprocessor won't create any CSS files from them. Now why would you want to create an SCSS file from which you don't get any CSS code? Well, a very common use case is that you want to just define all your variables in a separate file, for example. Or you could even go so far to just have your colors in a separate file, your fonts, your sizes, and anything else you want to define. This basically depends on the size of your project. So for example, if you have dozens of colors, it may be useful to create an own file for them to make your code even more modular and therefore also keeping your project more maintainable. So let's go ahead and do that with our project as well. Now for this small project, we're just gonna create a variables partial. So we're gonna take all our variables we have here, move them out of this file, and instead we're gonna create a new file, which I'm gonna save as underscore variables. Now why do I put an underscore there? You always have to do that for partials. That's the indicator that tells our preprocessor that this file defines a partial. So as soon as you add an underscore to the beginning of your file name, that tells SAS to not create a CSS file from this, because this is a partial. And the file extension just stays the same, so we have a .scss file. So let's go ahead and save this. And now in here, we can go ahead and copy all our variables in. And now we have this separate file which contains all our variables. Now there is a slight issue with the Sublime Unsafe Build plugin that we installed. And that is that it doesn't handle partials correctly. So it's just gonna treat them like any other SCSS file and, and it's gonna generate the CSS file. So if we now save this file here, you can see that it's gonna go ahead and create this underscore variables.css, which if we look at it, it's gonna be empty because there are no variables in CSS and all we have in our variables file are variables. So it's not gonna make much sense to create the CSS file. And we don't want that. So let's quickly go ahead and configure this plugin correctly. So to do that, we're gonna to go to preferences up here, then to package settings, select the sublime unsafe build, and then make sure you hit this settings user and not the settings default, because they would get overridden every time you update sublime text. So hit on settings user, and in here we're gonna add this code, which is gonna define the regular expression that defines what files should be generated. And you can see that this regular expression now also contains this underscore right here to make sure that partials are not generated to CSS code. And of course, I'm gonna add this code to the lecture material so you don't need to copy this from the screen. And you can just copy and paste that into your settings right here. And now once we have this out of the way, we can go ahead and close this tab. And now our plugin is configured correctly. So let's first get rid of our CSS files from before. So we can go ahead and click on delete file. And now we can go into our variables partial. And if we now try to save this, we can do so. And this is just the message from before. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. So now we can see that we can save our partial without having any CSS code generated from it. But now we have one thing left to do in our main SCSS file, because if we try to save this now, it's actually gonna give an error message, which begins up here with undefined variable text font. So the preprocessor is gonna go in here, read our body selector, and then gonna to try to find our variable called text font. But so far there's no connection between our main SCSS file and our variables partial. So what we can do is similar to CSS code, we can use an import statement. And then we can just use the clear name without any underscores or file extensions. So in this case, there would be variables. So we don't need to put any underscore here. And we also don't have to put the file extension at the end here because the preprocessor is intelligent enough to know what we want to import with this statement. Now, in case you don't know the import statement from CSS, don't worry too much about it. We're gonna talk about imports in more detail later. But for now, you can just imagine that this statement right here basically just inserts all the code from our file into this place. So the preprocessor is gonna go ahead, take all the code in this file, and then basically it's gonna replace this statement with this code. 
which is going to be equivalent to our previous version of our scss file. But now we have our variables modularized in our own file and we can use the power of the preprocessor to do this for us. While we keep our code modular and you can see that I missed the semicolon at the end here. So that would be a ses syntax and now I can go ahead and save this and it's going to create this CSS file as before. So we didn't make any semantic changes, but we did improve the design of our code base by having our separate variables file as a partial that we can just include anywhere we want to use that. And it also makes the organization of our code clearer. So if you want to modify any of the variables, you just look at the partial indicated by an underscore and you can go in there and just make any changes you want. And as I mentioned, you could go even further in larger projects and actually create partials for colors, for typography. It's also common to create a partial for a reset. You may know the normalized reset that's out there for you to use to get rid of any browser incompatibilities. So you can use this whenever you don't actually want a CSS file from that, but you just want to define variables or you just want to use that file as an import for other files, like this reset, for example. Because normally you don't want your normalization or reset code to be a style sheet by itself, but instead you just want to include that as the basis for your actual design to get rid of all the browser incompatibilities. All right, so if you want, you can split this up even further, even though it's not really necessary in this project. And I hope you can also see how partials help us keep our code base nicely modular and also nicely maintainable. All right, so that's it for this lecture and I'll see you in the next one.